The social approach uses conformity to explain the development of gendered behaviour. Gender is strongly influenced by the people around us. Egan and Perry suggest that children identify their own gender by the age of three and recognise their membership of that gender identity. This means social influence, such as the desire to fit in and follow gender norms, starts to take effect at a young age. By the time children reach primary school, they spend very little time with other children of a different gender. For example, they might be put into groups at school for certain activities according to their gender. Boys are commonly friends with boys and girls with girls. This is called gender segregation. Essentially, children are categorised into binary gender groups, so the distinction between male and female becomes stronger as we conform to the behaviour of the social category we're placed in. Boys spend more time with boys, making the pressure to conform to masculine characteristics stronger, and girls spend more time with girls, making the pressure to conform to feminine characteristics stronger. This means at a young age, children are often heavily influenced by other people of their own gender, usually the gender assigned to them at birth. However, as they get older, such as adolescence, high school, college and beyond, they begin to socialise more with members of the opposite gender. They begin to compare themselves with others. They essentially begin to question how typical they are compared to other members of their own gender. This can result in a shift in an individual's perception of themselves as social pressures change. Remember, gender is a complex topic and the ideas of masculinity and femininity can be seen as a spectrum. In adolescence, a person's awareness of this spectrum begins to develop. For example, they may begin to realise that they identify more with the opposite gender or experience gender dysphoria. Alternatively, this may strengthen their identification with their existing gender. One of the main influences on gendered behaviours is normative social influence, as we conform to what is expected of us according to our gender to fit in. Non-conformity is one of the biggest causes of stress for adolescents. For example, if someone is biologically male, however has feminine characteristics, this non-conformity may be a target for bullies. Gender norms can vary from culture to culture. What is considered masculine or feminine in one culture may be different in another. Attitudes towards gender non-conformity can also vary. For example, in Western cultures, it's generally more accepted for females to portray masculine characteristics, often labelled as tomboys, than it is for males to portray feminine characteristics. One strength of the social approach when explaining gender is that gender segregation is a plausible explanation for the development of typical gendered behaviour. The more time children spend with people of the same gender, the more this typical gender is strengthened. Another strength is the role of normative social influence, as there is evidence to support the link between gender nonconformity and bullying. A Canadian study showed that individuals who were not gender typical were 4.5 times more likely to have experienced bullying than their gender typical peers. However, there are also weaknesses to this, as another study done in Finland showed that 75% of participants had experienced bullying, however the bullying began before they identified as gender atypical. So gender nonconformity may not be the only cause of this peer influence. Overall, research suggests that whilst most people do recognise that normative social influence and peer pressure impacts on some aspects of gender, they are not the only factors, and gender identity itself is far more complex than simply gender typical or gender atypical.